Hello everyone, this is Malki Asad, and welcome to the fourth part of the case report series. In the first three episodes, we talked about how to start with the case report, the case presentation, and the introduction. In this episode, we'll go over the discussion. Many of the aspects that I will be talking about today will also apply to Fuldex articles, but there are specific aspects that apply to case reports. Many consider the discussion to be the most challenging part of the paper, because this is the section of the manuscript that requires the most critical thinking, the literature review, and contrasting comparing with prior studies. My recommendation is to find a quiet place without distractions. Some people prefer to do it on multiple days, and that's also fine. There are three main aspects of the discussion that should be included in every paper you have. These are the how your study compares to prior literature, the interpretation of your results, and the implications. And we'll go over each in separate slides. These are not three separate paragraphs of your discussion. Let's say you have your ideas and outline as we discussed in prior uh, videos and you have specific points you want to discuss. These points that you want to discuss have to touch on the prior studies, the interpretation, and the implication. And we'll start by the relationship to prior literature. How your study compares to prior, prior literature does not have to be included in only one section. Because as we mentioned, the case report has a diagnosis, has a disease presentation, management, and follow-up. And each of these can be compared to prior literature. Because let's say you diagnosed the disease with uh, specific exams. You can compare how your diagnosis differed or was similar to other studies. The same for treatment. You manage the patient, for example, surgically. Did other studies do the same? Did they get similar outcomes? So outcome is another thing you can compare your, your study to other studies. And it doesn't have to be similar. It doesn't, it doesn't always have to be different. Sometimes it's similar, sometimes it's not. So you can compare your studies to each of the, the aspects included to prior studies. Sometimes you support your interpretation or the implication by comparison to prior studies. One thing to be careful about is that you shouldn't take word by word. And I mentioned in my first video about the responsible research conduct and what defines plagiarism and what not. Paraphrasing is acceptable, where you take the meaning and rephrase it in your own words and use it with proper reference. For attribution, sometimes authors prefer to use uh, the author name of the paper or say, for example, a study from the University of and mention the outcomes of the study. That's also a nice way to change the way you express your, your uh, points in the study. So sometimes people say, uh, Dr. Smith et al. found and they mentioned the results. Sometimes they, they mention just a study found or a study by the University of found. All these are appropriate options for you to reference other studies or mention their outcomes. The interpretation means how does your uh, study fit with the bigger picture of the disease? Let's say you found a rare disease presentation and you treated that disease with a new way. How do you interpret your findings? Why, why this disease presented in this way? Why this treatment work? Why the others did not? So this is the hard part of the discussion because you're not just copying, pasting uh, ideas from, from prior studies. Now you're trying to understand how your study the results were found and what they mean and how they fit with other studies. So that's why, as I said, having good literature review beforehand, before you start even thinking about the case report, is very crucial because here, if you don't have a good understanding of the field, you won't be able to interpret your results. And again, your results could be interpreted in light of the prior studies, or if there is no prior studies about this and this is the first time you you find this finding or uh, this manifestation, you can have your own theories and support these theories by some findings from prior literature. 
And again, not only one aspect of your studies could be interpreted. For example, you could be interpreting the diagnosis. You could be interpreting the outcomes, the, the disease uh, treatment. Any aspect of the case can be interpreted and commented on. Authors usually don't choose to interpret every single thing in the case and compare every single thing in the prior studies. So you have to interpret some, explain some in the prior literature, give your own ideas to make the discussion flow. What does implication mean? Implication means what does your study change? Does your study allow a better understanding of the disease? Do we have now a better understanding of what the treatment should be? Should we as clinicians do a different approach after we read your study? In, in summary, implication mean what does your study change in the literature and affect the clinical practice? And I can give you a few examples. Let's say you treated a disease with a new medication or a new technique, surgical technique, and you found very good outcomes. After you reported these outcomes in a case report or a small case series, and people started reading and implementing this, and they found similar results, now your study changed clinical practice because now people, after reading your article, are starting to do something different, which is impacting patients positively. So this is what implications mean. Sometimes it doesn't have to be treatment. It can be a way of diagnosis. So you found a new test that can predict the disease in a better way. Let's say a new CT scan technique that can detect lung cancer. And after reporting your study, people can do this and discover, for example, lung cancer in a, at an earlier stage. I'm gonna give some examples from prior studies, and you can go to these studies and read the discussion. As a recommendation, the more articles you read and more you think how they uh, structured their discussion and their paper, the better you'll become in, in writing. Because it, the writing doesn't happen overnight, it happens with practice, you have to get feedback uh, from your mentors, you have to write, make mistakes, and learn from those mistakes, and the more you do, the better you become. The authors of this case reported the first human face transplant. Their discussion had few main points and they touched on the, these points with different aspects such as the interpretation, the prior literature, and the implication. The authors started by talking about the implications and simply the implication of this study is that patient with defects to their face which can be reconstructed in the traditional ways, can be candidates for full stress, for face transplant. Then the authors talked about the monitoring the immune response, what the technique they used, what the reasoning for that technique in comparison to the prior literature. They used infusion of donor bone marrow cells, and they talked how that was used in other human transplants and in animals and they interpreted their results in that aspect. So as you can see here, the authors had different points that they wanna discuss, but they touched on the implications, the prior literature and interpretation in, in different ways. This is the follow-up on the same case report. The authors started their discussion by summary of their findings, and this is a nice way for you to start your discussion for full text articles and for case reports. For example, you can say we are reporting on a case report and you can explain in two or three lines what your case is. And then you start talking about the different points you want to touch on. And again, always having an outline makes it easier for you to, to write the discussion. And I recommend discussing the outline with your mentor prior to going and writing because once you have a good structure, the rest will be way easier. The authors talked in the rest of the discussion about the rejection. They described the, how the process works and what prior studies have, have shown. Uh, similar ones could be the hand one because for this case, there was no prior face transplants. So the hand could be a similar uh, comparison. 
Then they talked about stem cell infusions, what the prior studies in other transplant to the organs found. And I uh, used this section from the discussion. If you can see here, the author started their paragraph by talking about the concern of rejection and that this led them to the use of stem cell infusions. They're saying that the role of donor stem cells is uncertain. However, it has been used in other studies without complications. So this flow of ideas makes it easier for your reader to understand your, your points and what you're trying to say. So you start by an idea, you try to link it to the next one, and then the third one comes in response to the first two. I see sometimes sentences mentioned in a way that are not linked together, which makes the reader lose your, your point. So always try to make the sentences linked together and the first sentence of the paragraph to explain what's going to come next. In this case report about metastatic cutaneous apocrine adenocarcinoma, the author's discussion touched on the three points I talked about, interpretation, prior literature, and implications. The interpretation, they interpreted why the patient responded to their treatment, because the patient had this cancer that expressed HER2 positive receptors, and they gave the patient pertuzumab, which is anti-HER2. So they interpreted the finding by the fact that the drug they gave targets the receptor that is overexpressed by the tumor. They compared these, this outcome to the prior literature, which is a randomized trial showing positive outcomes in patients with metastatic breast cancer, because this cancer was the first to be treated in such a way by the authors. So they referenced similar cancer but in breast, not in the not the apocrine and the non carcinoma. And the implications of the study is that now patients who have this similar disease presentation can be treated with this combination treatment. The case of the duplicate mouth, the author started their discussion by discussing discussing the facial duplication, the background, etiology, classification using prior studies and prior literature. Then they talked about their case and how it fits with the prior literature and what's different about this case, because this was not the first case to be reported. There were other seven cases, if I recall, and the authors explained in the discussion how their case is different and the manage management was different. Then the associated anomalies that comes with the duplicate face and what other studies have found and as you can see here, they're reporting different aspects of the case and comparing that to prior literature. So you see here, the associated anomaly, which is part of the disease presentation was compared to the prior literature. The etiology was also compared to prior literature and what different classifications are. Then the authors talked about the surgery and how other, other authors, authors uh, have treated the same disease. The embryogenesis, the, they discussed the literature and how their findings of, this, of their study, of their case report, fits within these theories about duplication of the face. So they combine the prior literature with the interpretation here. Here I have a case report that I wrote, and I wanna show you the example of the outline of my discussion. This is a case of patient with a missing part of their uh, cranium. And we reconstructed the, that part with, diff with different materials along the patient history. The first, the bone was used, then a material called peak, and then the patient had titanium. So we discussed the different materials that the patient received with the prior literature and when each material is used. So don't just take uh, reference from other studies without linking it to your study or mention things that don't uh, directly relate to your study because there are always uh, word, word limits that you need to respect and if you make your article too long that will make the author the readers lose attention 
So always try to keep your points and the things you want to discuss in relation to your article. So here we discuss the different options in light of the literature that the patient actually received. The complication rates, because our patient also had complications. So we discuss these complications in light of the literature. The material strength, and why we discuss that? Because this patient had a deformation of their uh, titanium cranioplasty. So we discussed which materials are the strongest, and if we use a different material, would that material have uh, fractured or deformed the same way, or would that, it would have been better? Then we talked about prior cases and how our case, our case is unique, not only in the presentation, but also in treatment. Which materials offer the best protection? Also in light of the literature, comparing the different strengths. And this was uh, done by comparing to studies done in lab, showing the different uh, strengths of these materials. Then the learning points, which were the implication of this study. And the implication of this study were that children who had this cranioplasty should be aware of the possibility that these materials could be deformed or fractured and should be wearing helmets whenever they're at high-risk activities. This is another case report I worked on. And we started our discussion by giving a quick summary of our case. Then we talked about the different reconstructive options. Here we reconstructed the abdomen with a piece of ileum. So we talked about the other reconstructive options and why these options did not apply to our patient. So here you can see how we linked the literature with our case. Because if we're just discussing the options without linking them to our case, it wouldn't fit in the, in the paper. So you need to discuss the options and why didn't you use them in your case? And these were simpler options that could have been used, but we reasoned why were, these were not the best option in our case. The other case reports that use this piece of ileum and how were they different and similar to our case, what's unique about our case and the implications, which is if you had a patient with a similar disease presentation, you can use this flap to reconstruct the abdomen. Finally, I want to touch about the conclusion. So for the case report, you don't have to have a full paragraph about for the conclusion. You can, if you want, you can summarize disease presentation, how you treated the, the patient, but you can just have the last line of your discussion as the conclusion saying, for example, uh, we reported on the case of, and you explain your case in a line or two, as we said for the last line of the introduction. I hope the information provided during this video were helpful. If you like it, subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Malki Asad. Thank you so much for watching and see you in future episodes.